Rohit, thanks for joining us. Um, it's a pleasure to have uh, your wisdom, your experience. Uh, you have uh, been told by many, a uh, serial entrepreneur, very motivated. Uh, with us today, we have Rohit Belani, co-founder of Element Packaging, a sustainable food packaging uh, company based in London. Um, I really want to know about this business. I want to know what motivates you. Rohit, please t tell me a little bit about yourself. Great. Firstly, uh, thanks, Joseph, for, for having me on this uh, show. It, it's, it's great to be here and great to be uh, speaking to uh, people out there who are genuinely interested in, in entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial you know, endeavors. So uh, just a, a bit of background about myself. Um, so I was born in Singapore and uh, I moved to London about 10 years ago. Um, but in between that, I went back to Singapore um, and then I came back again uh, for, for this particular business I am in. Uh, I've always had an entrepreneurial streak uh, you know, about me. I've always thought of how I can sort of improve people's lives, add value, and as a result of that, you know, make some money because ultimately uh, a, a, to a business, what's the meaning of business? It, it's a transaction you're doing, right? Uh, so that, that's been always my thinking, my drive since young. I've grown up in a business environment. Uh, my family, um, uh, uh, you know, are entrepreneurs. So I've always heard dad talk about, you know, uh, how the, the sales strategies he implements and how he chats with customers and things like that. So it's always been a very fun uh, salesy sort of you know atmosphere being part of so that's uh, my little background I did go to university in in London and I'm also partly educated in Singapore yeah um so what did you always did you ever work for someone um so the honest answer is I just did internships um um, but I never ever formally worked for someone. I think the longest I've ever worked for anybody has just been for four months. Uh, and that was in London in a legal publishing company, uh, which I wasn't very happy with. So uh, and what but, did you study here in London? So I read English language and communication from King's College, London. Um, and then my, my diploma um, was in film media studies. So it was a mix of journalism, film media, and then I went to university and did English at uh, King's College. Okay. And what about this business that you're involved in now? Um, how long have you been doing it? How did it start? Tell me a little bit about the story. Right. Okay. It's a very unusual story. And um, yeah, sometimes I can't even believe this is my, my journey. But um, if I had to, uh, you know, perhaps describe it, I'd say it was quite an incredible incredible journey. So let me talk about how it started and then I'll sort of put timelines to it. Um, so um, I was in Singapore, so I mentioned that I've been in London for about 10 years now and in between I went back to Singapore. So this is where this whole thing was born. This is where the birth of the company happened. So um, my friend who was a British, he was living in Singapore at that time and uh, we were mates, you know, and uh, we, we, he was at university and I had just finished university and I'd gone back to Singapore. So uh, we were just talking and stuff like that. And we thought, you know, Hey, let's, let's launch a business because I, you know, always wanted to, to do something. So um, I realized that in Singapore, there was a lot of um, talk about sustainable packaging and sustainability in general, Singapore being quite a modern you know, country, quite ahead of the rest of the world where, where green solutions are concerned. We thought, you know, it's definitely going to come into Europe at some point. It's going to be a point of a, a talking point for everybody. So we need to do something about it. And he said, yes, yes, you know, let's do some research and all of that. Now, while we were talking about all of this, we just realized we're actually neighbors as well. So that was really funny. Like, I didn't know he lived like about a 10 minute walk away from me. Um, um, so what we did was um, we just focused. Lit when I say focus, I mean, I blinkered myself. We contacted um, some agencies in Singapore who were helping fellow entrepreneurs uh, to set up businesses in London. So we got help from them to find out and do research about the sustainable packaging space in the UK. So both my business partner, the co-founder of Element Packaging is uh, called Adam. So Adam and I flew to London um, and we just stayed here for about a week or two weeks to do initial research in the market. And by research, I mean, um, just scan the market and see whether sustainable packaging is 
a viable business proposition, a viable business idea. Uh, let me talk about sustainable packaging a bit more, just for you to get some context. So our company sells um, packaging that's not plastic. Uh, so the materials are mainly paper. The lining of, of the, the, the paper would be polylactic acid, which is plant-based lining. So when you go to like uh, certain coffee shops, you will see coffee cups. You think they are eco-friendly, but they're not. In fact, most coffee shops do not have eco-friendly coffee cups. They look paper, they are paper, but the lining is PE, which is polyethylene, which is plastic. So they cannot be composted. Polyethylene uh, sometimes they can be recycled. Sorry? Polyethylene thraflet. Yes. Is it a plastic? <laughs> so some, yes. So sometimes they can be recycled and sometimes they can't. Uh, so we you know, started thinking of how we can make this completely eco-friendly. So we've launched aqueous linings, we've launched other different linings, but they're all plant-based. You launched them? So, um, yeah, so we found out that this is a great opportunity. Everyone is telling us, those in the UK, uh, those in Singapore, they said it's a fantastic business idea because you're actually solving, you know, a many things. Problem. You're solving Yes, who you're solving a... Who wouldn't want to solve the world problem? This is the Superman we're asking for. Exactly. And this is five years ago when even David Attenborough wasn't talking about sustainability. Well, he was, but maybe it wasn't as widespread as it is today. So um, we said, you know what? Let's do it. Okay, now let's do it. Now, how do you do it? I think this is what all our viewers out there would be so interested to know. Now, when you talk about launching a business, everyone talks about this money. Where is the money going to come from? Uh, who are we going to ask for money? Uh, 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 who will believe in my idea? Um, you know, so this is where I think we have faced the most struggle, right? And I think this is where every business faces the most struggle. To launch something, you need that, that support, that financial support. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if your business is very unique and it's an innovation from your end like you know if, if if john wakes up one morning and he invents something and it takes 10 years to invent he's got the the rights and the patent for that particular item or that product then it's quite easy he can go into he can go to a body approach the body he can get it patented and he can he can get funding to launch his item now when you are buying and selling. So we are traders. We trade these products. We, we buy them from uh, several countries around the world who are already manufacturing such products. And then we, we, what we do is uh, we change the, the shape, the size. We have a lot of input in the design element, on the material element, on who we target in the UK. So we, that's our input, right? And then we sell it to our customers in the UK. Mm -hmm. So that is not, it's not, innovation innovation it's it's an add-on if you like you know but it's not like it's not my material no. you're we along the value chain correct so um we approached you know many people and the first people you obviously approach is your parents um now because i come from an entrepreneurial background you know so my parents quite understood what i was looking at and they asked you know if we had done research and all of that shared with them and we got some money from them, it was a small amount. And then I had also saved up some money and uh, my co-founder had saved up some money and that's how we started. Now the company has gone uh, from strength to strength. Um, so it's been Sorry five to stop years. You there. How cool. did you feel putting your money into this? I mean, were you confident? Were you, I mean, what uh, was it the only, what was going through your mind? Like, I, I'm just putting myself in your shoes. I would think, look, even if it's a brilliant idea, I feel so threatened, you know, to put my savings into this. You know, I, I don't know, what, what were the risks involved? And, you know, how did you mentally overcome those risks? Or what was your, what was your thinking process? Right. My honest answer is fear. Right, okay. Which should not be the case. It's, it's fear. But alongside the fear was a lot of confidence as well. Like I was, so there was fear that this might fail and then I would have to start from ground zero. So that was the fear. But then there was this inner, like rock solid confidence that, you know what, I will make it happen whatever it takes me to do this by hook or by crook. I'm going to do it and I'm going to get 
advice along the way. I'm going to network with people. I'm just going to be pavement pounding, like literally going from shop to shop, cafe to cafe, restaurant to restaurant to make this happen because it's either do or die. So that was in my head. It's a do or die situation, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not, I did not want to go back to the drawing board at all. Although sometimes you have to, this is business. You would have to reinvent yourself. So yes, the honest answer is fear and a mix of, confidence at the same time it's a bit odd isn't it to going together when they are actually quite separate <laughs> well i guess to a certain degree if it was just fear you might have stopped but the fact that you were confident and i mean it's such a good thing to do you know to save the planet whilst making profit you know that would just drive well that would drive me at least you know that confidence that i'm doing something that i believe in doing i believe is the correct thing to do um so even though I might be putting my savings on this, I'll think, well, look, at least I'm making a bit of a difference. Um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a fantastic story. But, you know, please, please tell me more. So what happened next? Next, So you got the funding. Um, you started the business. Yeah, so, so I mean, yeah, so initially, you know, we, we put our savings together. Parents helped a bit here and there. And then we launched the company. And uh, obviously there were teething problems. You know, we had to tell people that what you're using at the moment, plastic is really bad for the environment. And they said, yes, we totally agree. So give us the alternative. So we give them the alternative. They said, oh, wow, that's amazing. How much is it? We said the price is X. They're like, oh, but I'm paying Y at the moment. And mine is so much cheaper. It does the job. I don't care what happens, you know. So, so, so why? Why are you even bothering with this? You know, our, our profit margins are so low because when you go to a food market or when you go to any cafe or restaurant, their margins are quite low. Uh, so wh why would I pay 20 or 30 percent more for something that's eco-friendly? And this is where then you go into like, you go back to the office, you're like, oh my God, today was also another difficult day. And you go out again the next day and you keep getting constantly bashed, you know, with the same objections you come back feeling so rejected. You know it's a great idea. You know people are telling you it's a fantastic idea, but then why are we not selling? Mm. So this was happened for about the first six months, six to eight months, yeah. Then we decided to change the strategy. Yeah. We told people, right, this package, is 20% more than what you currently use. So you use a plastic box, for example. Ours is, let's say your box is one pound. Uh, ours is 20% more, so it's gonna be one pound 20. We sell it to you. Why don't you add 20 and then sell that food, whatever, to your customer and tell them this is plant-based. We're not hurting the environment. We are a business that's sustainable. We are clean. We care for the environment and we care for you at the same time. This was our messaging. So we changed everything completely. It was all about the customer. It was all about you. It was all about you are great because you're eating with us because we care about the environment. And by eating with us, you're not damaging the environment. Now that really changed a lot of things. You know, uh, We started getting recognition and uh, we started looking at different sectors um, and we, we kept growing and growing and growing. Now, when you grow, there's a problem. The problem is this, again, it's money, right? Because let's if I give you an example. You invest 10 pounds into your business. I'm going to invest 10 pounds into the business. I'm going to buy 10 boxes, correct? I'm going to sell those 10 boxes. I sell the box each for two pounds. So one box is a pound each. I'm going to sell it for two pounds. So my profit is 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, when the business expands, you need 50 pounds now to buy boxes because there's a lot more demand. Now, what do you do? You need to go back to the drawing board and you need to ask investors to invest in your business. Now, they're going to ask you, fine, I've invested the first time already. I've not got my money back. In fact, now you're coming back to me and asking me for more money. Right. So you're like, oh my God, this is do or die situation because if I don't get more money, I'm going to collapse. I'm going to be stagnant, right? Yeah. If I get more money, who am I supposed to get money from? Now, this is where then you've got to start developing a business case for, for investors. That's when you go to people with a lot of money, you approach companies who actually help other companies develop mm -hmm. their business. Uh, so then we started writing pitch decks. A pitch deck is a, a little sort of snapshot 
a view overview of your company, what uh, who your company's customers are, how long you've been doing sales, what your balance sheet is, and things like that, and what's the growth potential of the market. Um, and we started approaching investors, and this is where we saw a lot more interest because people were seeing that you know sustainability is the way forward, and people are moving towards that. And uh, yeah, we got more investment. And as soon as we got more investment, we kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And uh, after five years, I'm very, very proud to say that uh, we work with some of the largest chains in the UK. Uh, so if, uh, for those of you who have heard of Shake Shack, um, oh, yeah, you know, if, uh, we, the, our products are all in Shake Shack. Uh, if you have heard of Wasabi in, in central London, uh, Wasabi, if you notice that green spoon in Wasabi, Oh, yeah. uh, the cornstarch spoon, that's our spoon. Oh, wow. um, yes, if you, to Planet Organic, if you go to Planet Organic or Pure or Crush or, you know, if you're a football fan, if you like Liverpool Football Club, you know, a lot of our products are in, in, all, in all these places, many, many food markets. I sometimes go into cafes and I'm trying to like sell them my products, but I realize, oh, wait, this spoon I think is mine. And then I ask them, like, is this cornstarch? They're like, yes. And I'm like, is this from... Who do you buy it from? They'll tell me the supplier. And I know, oh, we actually supply the supplier, you know, because we are wholesalers. So that's when I know it's my product. It's a very proud moment. Um, and uh, we're still obviously constantly have to go back to the drawing board because you need to put, you need to give customers something new every time, right? You yeah. need to reinvent. Um, because when you launch a product in the market, um, you're going to get a lot of competition, competition, competitors coming in. Competitors means people who are selling something very similar to what you're selling and they become, you know, your adversaries, if you like. They, they, they will sell, if you sell at two pounds, they might sell at one pound 80. If you sell at one pound 80, they might sell at one pound 60. So it becomes, you know, sort of un, a bit of a healthy or unhealthy competition. Depends. I think it's healthy, but so then you've got to reinvent bring in new products, you know, find new different angles, um, and do innovative marketing techniques to, to, to bring your products, you know, further out. So, yeah, that, that's what we've been doing. Sorry, I've just been going on talking. <laughs> no, this is fantastic. You're literally drilling everything, anything from the, uh, the, the, the value chain, you know, at which stage you're out of the value chain, the competitive market, the price war, you know, that, uh, the fact that I guess there's low barriers to entry, hence you might have this competition that you need to differentiate yourself and it's not anymore about, hey, look, buy us because we're the lowest price. It's like, no, no, you're buying us because you are, you know, your values are what we support. And you're not paying for a spoon. You're paying because you're saving the planet. Do you want to save the planet for your children or not? I would. Um, so, yeah, this is, so, and, and, so it's been five years. Um, I think the hardest bit from, from what I hear so far was getting that, this fantastic idea through the door. Uh, and being able to get all this rejection and, and not stopping and sort of thinking of, of a creative way in which you could differentiate your product. Um, and one, I guess, a question I'd like to ask is, is currently the market price quite sticky um, in terms of, is it, is it fluctuating a lot uh, um, because of competition or are you sort of, is, is it, are you, are you able to differentiate to the point that your, your business is kind of the, the one with quite a big market share in the, uh, in the, in the, in the market? What, what, is, what is your business at at the moment? Is it still growing? Have you reached the, uh, the cusp of the, uh, of the, of the mountain? Right. So I think uh, there's so much more growth potential for our business. There's a lot to know. Um, we are at the scale up stage, I would say. Uh, we are no longer a startup. We've passed that uh, because our revenues are in the millions uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, so we are a scale up and um, we, um, where, where price points are concerned, uh, yes, of course, competition is always going to be um, and you've got to constantly reinvent yourself, find new things. Um, Sorry. But you know something, uh, price is not everything. Yeah. Um, when you give a customer assurance, when you give a customer customer service, when you give a customer the ethos, you know, they're buying an entire ethos, they're buying into the brand, they're buying into 
this ecosystem which you have created, you've given them something that's, that's, that's great and they, they love it, the ease of working with you. Um, also, I've not mentioned that uh, for uh, uh, whatever packaging you buy, they actually plant trees as well in sub-Saharan Africa. So they love the cause marketing we do around our products. So when you bundle everything together, they think even if they're spending 10 or 20p or 50p more per box, uh, uh, per case rather, per case of, of cutlery or per case of, of packaging, they don't mind paying it because they know that when I, I can trust this company, you know, it's 24 hour delivery we provide. So if you order your products today, it arrives tomorrow. Um, I mean, I've had customers and, and I, I can't mention names here, which customers, but these are quite big brands. They come up to us and say, oh, we want to work with you uh, because our current suppliers are doing such an appalling job. You know, uh, the customer service is absolutely appalling and uh, we haven't been receiving uh, the right information. Uh, I actually got a very big um, government contract just by telling them the truth. So they asked me a question um, and I was being very honest in my answer. And the, the answer I gave them wasn't actually beneficial to me and my company. Basically, it wasn't, it wasn't sort of saying that, uh, oh, yes, yes, you should go absolutely sustainable. Yes, you should spend 30% more. I asked them questions back. I said, what's your waste infrastructure like? You know, do you have the waste set up to take in uh, plant-based packaging? If you don't, then I suggest you go with recycled plastic first. And we do recycle plastic. So start with recycled plastic and then slowly move up. So they really appreciated by honesty. They said, well, you are a sustainable you know, packaging company. You should be selling what your, your products, you know, why aren't you like, why aren't you? I said, because it's against my ethos to, to lie to you. You know, you're going to find out in the future and that will not pay, pay me well, you know. So I want to be upfront and honest with you and tell you that this is a situation at the moment where you are, you should go with this sort of packaging and maybe one, two years down the line, you can switch to completely plant-based. We don't do much recycled plastic. We do a bit, but we don't do much. But we can definitely, you know, yeah, point you to, to different people who do it. And then down the line, we can switch. They were so happy with that. They were so happy. It's a big government contract. We got the contract. Wow. We, got, we won the contract. And when I asked her, <laughs> what set us apart? She said, oh, I loved your branding. I loved, you know, uh, your customer service. You responded immediately. Uh, you know, price obviously was high because obviously they were moving from plastic to, you know, so they said it was high and there were competitors were slightly, slightly lower for, for plant-based sustainable packaging. But it really kind of baffled us is that you spoke the truth. Mm -hmm. And that really, you know, made us realize that your company is just not all about selling, 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 but also giving people, you're empowering people with the right information they need to get packaging. You know, you, you're letting them know, hey, hey, don't go crazy. Don't go plant-based, 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 plant-based. You need to understand the ecosystem first before you make a decision. Is it hurting you or is it helping you? Is it, uh, uh, you know, uh, creating a dent in your pocket or is it not? Once you give them value, you let them make their decision. If they love you, they will come back to you. And if they don't, that's fine. But at least they know that you have given them information that is going to help them to move forward. And remember, goodness always comes around, even in business. I know business is a lot of you guys might think that business is all about making money. Yes, it is. It is about making money. It is about making profit. But I think we started off the conversation, Joseph, by saying that business is about adding value. Business is about giving something people do not have, making someone's life simpler, making someone's life easier, making someone's life more honest, making someone's life more truthful, making someone's life less damaging. So what my business does is we make someone's life more guilt-free, more conscious happy because we are not damaging the very ecosystem we thrive on and this is our usp so while price is important i think customers look at a lot of other things around it now i, I gotta say you, you've sold me i mean this is this is fantastic all i could see is come and get some packaging from us now my money, <laughs> give my money take my life savings please keep on changing the world but i have to ask a question 
what are the problems in the market at the moment? You know, what, uh, what's, what do you see in the future as an obstacle for growth, for developing, for developing the, the, the industry or for developing your firm in this industry? Um, you know, what, what are the biggest, biggest, yeah, the biggest problems that you see at the moment or ahead in the next 10 years? Wow. Okay, so the biggest hurdles I see in the next 10 years would be um, a lot more players coming into the market. Um, now, let's say today I've got five competitors. Tomorrow I might have 20 competitors. Now, what's going to happen? Because there's so much choice. And if everyone goes back to the drawing board and everyone has a mantra saying that, oh, we need to reinvent ourselves, reinvent ourselves. So it's not just us reinventing ourselves, it's the 20 others also reinventing themselves. Now, who's going to win? right? At some point, you're going to be very stagnant. Your growth is going to be very stagnant. Mm. So that's the first problem. Um, and I think potentially one of the only problems, this is where being creative and being hungry comes into the picture. So how hungry are you, right? So we've tackled, we've saturated the UK market. Now it's time to look at other markets. So that's when you hire agents and salespeople and start looking at, let's say, Portugal, Spain, Italy, the US, India, you know, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, uh, Africa. There's so many countries and there are hundreds of countries in the world and every country is at a different speed, you know. So when you have kind of reached saturation point in your market, that's when you look at scalability and that should always be at the back of your head when you launch a business is my business scalable you know is my business only for the uk and no other market can use it if i'm selling let's say um i don't know some some very specific product to the uk can i then sell it in nigeria can i sell it in indonesia can i sell it in you know south america like this is where you will have to think about so in our, in our case, yes, our products can go to many different markets. So amidst all the competition we have, we then have to start looking outwards. And that's where we are at the moment. We have not reached saturation point yet, thank God. <laughs> um, but we think it is prudent to look at other markets as well, as well as while we're growing in the UK, because look at what COVID has done to us. COVID has thrown a spanner in the works, you know? So if there's a lockdown in the UK, business is affected. Now, business is affected, but the US is open. Uh, India is open. South Africa is open. Singapore is open. Like these countries are all absolutely normal. So business there is normal. So this is where having a presence in other countries can then balance things, you know, because your other markets are still regular. They're still buying. They're still, you know, this way. The trend is going up. Whereas the UK is like this. So you are getting an income stream from other markets. And in the UK, you're kind of, you know, doing well, but not well enough. But it's okay, because you've got other markets to, to help you. But there's only one of you, Rohit. And I, I mean, you know, if, uh, I'm just sort of permutating here, so looking at different scenarios, I would imagine there'll need to be one of you in the, in the States, one of you in India, one of you in South Africa, for this to work. Because like you said, you know, they're not, I mean, it's a good cause. It's, it's, you got something that saves the world. Um, yet at the beginning, they weren't buying it. You had to go through this process of learning and seeing, you know, what makes a difference? How, how can I get this in, how can I, how can I get some market penetration here? You know, is it pricing? Is it in a way adding value to the, to the customer? How, how would you do that? You know, you can't split yourself. Um, I mean, is it, do you, is, is there a lot of people you rely on? Is there sort of a, a strong group of people that, su that support each other to do this? I mean, that is such a good question, Joseph. Uh, and I'm glad you, you asked that. I didn't touch upon it earlier. But I, I would say that if there, is, if there are two things that a business should look at is, firstly, the product or the service they're offering. Obviously, that has to be there. It has to be good. The second thing is the team of the business investing in people is so important your company is as good as your team if your team is unhappy if your team is not motivated there is no business you know if 
my sales guys out there are not doing a great job, I won't be here talking to you. I'd say, oh, I'm sorry, we shut down 10 years ago, five years ago, you know. So yes, I am looking to replicate myself in all these different territories. And this is what um, human resource is all about. You start interviewing people in different markets um, and try to get one whom you think is going to help your business go places. And this is where you need to start investing in training, in human, in, in training and development, in, in people's skills, different, uh, sales training, and uh, build a team in these countries. You know, or, and, and they're very cost-effective ways of doing this. You don't need to hire someone full-time. You can sometimes just uh, uh, get an agent, a part-time agent on board, who is working on several different projects at the same time, and he up works on your project too. He does research. And he tells you, hey, you know what, I've identified that this is not the great place to, to work in because no one cares about plastic. Or maybe it is a good place to work in because no one cares about you know, sustainability and they will care about it in the future. Uh, so yeah, it is about replicating yourself and sort of looking after the people who work with you. you know? Because even the people we've worked with in the UK, our core sales team, giving them the opportunity to perhaps go to to an, another English speaking territory, because obviously they speak English. So maybe go to the US or go to South Africa or go to Singapore, English speaking countries and open up the markets, you know? So you give them incentives uh, that you've done a great time. You've done a great job in, in the UK. Now, you know, we're giving the option to move to country X or country Y. Uh, are you interested? We want to open up the market there. Um, and yeah, so it's really about replicating yourself and replicating someone with the same enthusiasm and the same um, robustness in, 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 yeah, as you. There's, there's one, one final question, the last, uh, last sort of two minutes that we have, Rohit. You know, if you had a message to give back to yourself, um, you know, during the hard times or, you know, when you were a 16, 17 year old, um, you know, what, what will you tell yourself or what would you do different? To, to, I guess, to enrich yourself or, you know, what, what sort of message would you give to yourself? You know, if you look, if you could go back in time to when you were 16 or, you know, when you, when you were starting your business. Wow. This is a very, it's an easy question, but it's, a, it's, it's got a very deep answer to it. Um, <clears throat> okay. Right. So, Fear. Fear is the one thing that cripples all of us. Fear for, you know, uh, um, governance, fear for exams, fear in relationships, fear in business, fear in losing, fear in, 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 in every aspect of our life. There is always, we, we always feel that there is an uncertainty. There is, uh, um, there is, there's resistance, you know? Mm -hmm. So if there's one thing I would share is that I wish I had been less fearful. I really wish I had been less fearful. Because of my fear, I haven't perhaps had that speed which I could have achieved, you know? It's because of fear. Because when we launched the first set of products, we just stuck to those products. We were thinking of launching many other products. We were like, no, it may or may not work. It may or may not work. We may it may not work, but we should have done it anyway. You know, of course, with calculated risks. But I think fear is something that sometimes just stops you from doing a lot of things. And more often than not, fear is is just thoughts. It's just communicating with yourself. You're creating it in your own mind. See, the situation is the situation, right? You can go and get it solved by speaking to people by analyzing it, by going back to the drawing board, by speaking to your business partner, your colleagues or whatever. Yeah. But fear is something that's created in the mind. It can actually make you go crazy. I had nights when I would not have any meal to eat uh, because I was so nervous of what would happen the day after when you owe people money or when you need to pay your suppliers, you need to grow the business, you're looking for investors. You know, these are such difficult experiences we go through. Mm -hmm. But 
fear makes it even worse because it amplifies the problem. The problem can be solved by, like I said, in various ways, but fear just stops you from doing anything. Fear just stops you from getting out of bed because you're so depressed. You're like, oh my God, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. And then five years from, from, you know, from, from the time we started, I'm looking back and I'm like, why did I even think that? Why did I even feel that? You know, I am where I am. And today, whenever there's a big problem, and there's problems all the time, there's challenges all the time. Every time there's challenges, there's shipment challenges, there's challenges with the customers. Customers, sometimes you order goods for customers, they just return because, oh, sorry, we don't want it. Oh, this quality is bad or this or that, or, you know, whatever. There's quirky customers, there's, you know, but I, I don't think we should be fearful. We just address it head on and deal with it. Mm-hmm. So never, ever be fearful. Have faith, trust yourself, trust the power in you, trust the idea in you, be clever in your research. Don't, I know there are people out there who think they have got the most brilliant idea on this planet, but actually it's done already for the last 50 years. I'm happy that you think your idea is unique. Uh, That's great. But just be a bit smart about it, you know, find from friends, speak to trusted people. You don't want to speak to random people, speak to trusted people. Find out if it's great. And if you keep getting good feedback, you know, then take it on board. And always remember that the ones who criticize your idea are the ones actually you should be bringing close to you because they're actually helping you develop your business. The ones who say, oh my God, man, great idea, great idea. Okay, then what? But the ones who criticize you, and I I often speak to my friends who are business owners, they criticize me. They criticize my business. Okay, you've done this and this and that. Now what? What if I come up tomorrow and set up a business and do exactly that? Then what? So you need, you need people to criticize your ideas. You need people to tell you, hey, this is right, but this is wrong. Ah, uh, no, not, no, no, no. This is not going to work because X, Y, Z. Take those things on board, but don't let fear take over. So take it on board, but don't let fear take over you. Wow. Rohit, I have to say, you're very inspirational. Uh, you know, one of the most inspirational people I heard from, uh, you're doing oh, this. Thank you. I think most of us, you know, been dreaming about a bit, like you said, you know, I guess fear stop us, stops us from, um, from achieving our goals. And, um, I, I, you know, you put into perspective problems, they might have a solution, but fear certainly is never been found to be the solution to our problems. So why even have fear at all? Rohit, I mean, thank you so much for your time. I, I, I really appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, I, I think anybody who's watching the video is going to find it more than helpful. Um, I hope we speak soon, Rohit. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Joseph. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye.